Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Arun Herman. How do you merge fashion and technology? With the opportunity to speak with Israeli entrepreneur, Dani Peleg, about how she's using 3D printing to change the way we look at fashion. Let's take a closer look. 3D printing is transforming the way that we um, really connect to our environment. Um, and as a fashionista mm -hmm. of Israel, you really change the way people look at fashion and technology. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Um, my name is Danit Peleg. I'm from Israel, Tel Aviv. And I 3D printed an entire fashion collection from my apartment. And my project uh, captured the eyes of millions of people. And now I get a chance to um, talk about it and uh, share it with uh, a lot of uh, different audiences. And when you say share it, I mean, you, first of all, your, your video went viral. And as an entrepreneur, um, you have to understand scalability, how you can connect to people who are interested um, in, in your vision. Um, and especially now, uh, you, you did a dress for the Paralympics, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the world really saw um, the power of fashion 3D printing. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started and sort of how this all has sort of became this incredible uh, w new way of technology and fashion. Um, I studied fashion design in Israel at Shankar, and as a student, I realized the most uh, I am very much interested of uh, creating my own textiles. So I was always uh, testing different kind of technologies for my project, and um, I tr I was working with laser cutting and knitting machines and um, a lot of different kind of uh, fashion technologies, and and then uh, for my final project, when I realized I really I need to come up with really unique uh, and special idea so I can make it to the final runway show in my school. Um, um, so on the, the same year a friend gave me a 3D printed necklace and I realized he was using these desktop printers and I realized that he was able to print it in any way he wanted it so I just I I was thinking, why not print clothes? And that's what um, uh, pushed me to try to understand, because we have these printers already, so why people are not using it for fashion? Um, and because I live in Tel Aviv, which is a very innovative city, um, I was able to meet the right people. I was able to go to a makerspace that was completely, you know, free and open and um, had all the technology was needed to start my research. And, um, and I think the, the reason I could come up with this kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, a revolution, breakthrough, I don't know what to call it, um, was because I'm from Israel. And um, I think uh, it's, it's really um, a, great, a great thing for us as, um, as a, I mean, to live in this kind of environment and like uh, help each other and uh, um, share our knowledge with each other. And I think it's very special for Israel. One of the things I always ask uh, Israeli entrepreneurs is, why do you think Israelis are so innovative? It's a great question. I think we're always looking. Um, we live in such a small country, you know, and um, and uh, sometimes we feel our um, our life being chosen to be very complicated. So in any other aspect in our life, we're trying to find creative solution for for things. So technology is only like one of them, but also um, health. Uh, you know, um, um, there is a lot of breakthrough in the health industry, um, and a lot of different kind of areas, but I think we're just looking on stuff on a different eye, you know, different way, and we're really uh, stubborn, so so it's really good for, it. yeah, exactly, we're really stubborn to sell our idea and uh, to, to, uh, uh, to see the world using it from, you know, that it came from a small office in a small country and now everyone is using Waze, right? So, so I think uh, it's part of our culture. Well, let's talk about the, the filament because, uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen different types of 3D printers and, um, Finding the right filament is, is critical to making sort of the idea come true. Um, talk a little bit about how you uh, found your filament, 
um, and how you, how you can scale. It takes hours to, to print, uh, and now obviously 3D printers are evolving, but tell us a little bit about that process. Um, so it's a great question. Um, the main challenge for me was uh, to find the right filament to print uh, to feed the printer with. Um, I decided to use these small desktop printers and not go into industrial big printers that uh, uh, cost a lot of money. Um, so I was doing a really deep research about different materials and there is a really a lack of materials right now in the market because this technology is really, really at the beginning. Um, so um, I end up using Filoflex, which is a really flexible material. It's a Spanish brand. Um, and they saw my project on Instagram uh, when I had like uh, 10 followers or something and immediately they fell in love. They were like very curious about what I'm, what I'm doing and they sent me all the materials I was using to in order to finish my project so they were a huge help um, and uh, I think in the in the future so this material feels like rubber um, it's not a plastic you know the most traditional material for 3d printing is really stiff um, and I took this material and I use it in a way uh, my textile is has a flexible structure mm -hmm. that's why when you combine it with flexible material it's turned out to be like a real fabric mm -hmm. um, so after I made this small piece, I realized I can make a huge piece uh, out of it. But in the future, the material will feel like uh, cotton or silk yeah. or leather or, you going. know. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, how long does it take to actually produce one of your dresses? So to print uh, my, f uh, my collection, it took me around 2,000 hours for, for five outfits. So it was around 300 hours for one dress. Um, but I can tell you this year I'm using uh, uh, the new version of this printer and it's three times faster than the one I was using last year, just a year ago. Um, so the Olympic dress was, uh, took me around 120 hours um, and uh, it's much faster um, compared to last year. But if you have a lot of printers, it's even uh, faster to just print uh, all the pieces together. And how does it feel as an entrepreneur to now, like, you know, especially being on the world stage. Like, first, how did, how did that happen? And, it, like, now that you're in this sort of, um, this element of entrepreneurism, and if you're looking at you to sort of be the leader in this field, how does that feel? Um, it's really strange, <laughs> I have to say. I mean, I graduated a year ago, so I uh, everything happened very fast. Um, the way it started, um, my fiance decided we have to share our uh, this story because we had six printers in my house that I was renting, um, and and I was printing clothes, and he, he, he found it very special. So he decided to start document the whole process I was working. Um, I was really into the project, so I didn't care about like documenting it. But Goody was there because he shared it, and he and and then our video uh, went viral, and uh, it's got uh, more than five million views in uh, two weeks. Um, so. So we, we understand that uh, people are excited about mm -hmm. the idea of uh, the future of fashion, the, uh, the way the, f the future of fashion might look like, you know. Um, so this is how I started. And then uh, I was invited to do a TED Talk um, here in New York. So that opened another uh, um, incredible doors. And now my talk is uh, translate to 40 different languages and um, there is a lot of um, a few million uh, views to this talk um, and yes uh, so um, I'm happy I can give something you know I was uh, a lot of people helped me to understand this technology I didn't know anything about 3d printing when I started this project nothing um, and I learned from um, from the experience and from other people knowledge online or 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 live you know and now I feel I need to give back to this community so that's why I am sharing my recipe and story and idea one thing that um, I always like to talk about is a little about the hustle now and now that you sort of maybe breathe a little bit um, what's your hope for the future ah uh, it's a great question um, so future you mean next month or <laughs> Generally, um, um, my vision for myself uh, will be to to be able to continue create and uh, push the boundaries of fashion and technology and keep uh, uh, be like innovative and uh, um, so 
I just hope I'll be able to just continue do my thing, you know, and not be worried about uh, being an uh, artist. Because well, sometimes... You definitely have. <laughs> you definitely have. You, you, you've seen, you have understand that this is innovative and this is the way of the future. So you really have that. And, and I uh, wish you all the luck. And, Thank you so much. And where can people learn more about uh, your work? Uh, so you can visit my website. Uh, it's called danitpeleg.com. And you could see um, my Tazis project collection. And soon I'll be launched the uh, next collection, uh, my second collection. And you can also see the Olympic, the Paralympic uh, dress that was uh, showing in the opening ceremony in Rio uh, a week ago. As you can see, Danny Pelag is truly an innovator in the fashion and technology sector. What's going to happen in the next couple of years? Who knows? I'll be printing our own clothing at home. But with 3D printing, we see... Anything is truly possible. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.